Well, so much for that 3-0 sweep we had on Wednesday. It was just the opposite on Thursday. That's that's no good. We're going to be better today. Uh, I was wrong about the Celtics on the show yesterday, so I adorned myself in green today on Friday. Mark Zinno, the weekend is almost here. We're talking college football Saturday and World Series nice. Game 1 uh, on the program today. Please, please uh, lift my spirits before we get into wow. uh, a couple big games for Saturday. I mean, look, uh, let's, I will say this much. Um, you know, we give out a lot of free winners on the show uh, and free plays on the show. I did cash my 4% NFL bet last night on the Rams. So oh. for those who bought the package, uh, we, we, we encourage you. Like, we love giving out free plays and we're, we're good at it and we're, we're doing well for you guys. But, you know, every now and then just uh, venture out and buy a play because sometimes they're not always the same. So uh, that's our, our small piece of advice. I will, however, since he didn't do it himself, I will, however, take some semblance of blame here because Brian yes. Powell last night wanted to bring, a, a, before yesterday's show, told me he wanted to talk about Old Dominion on this show and he wanted that to be his half of the double play. And I laughed at him and I said, no one gives a rip about Old Dominion. Stop talking about Old Dominion. Like It's like the same thing as your Europa Soccer League crap that you like to talk about. No one cares, okay? And you listen to me, so I will take the blame for us not getting at least one right on the double play. Much like my ex-wife, I take the blame for everything that goes on in this relationship. So uh, I will learn to live with it. Uh, yes, Old Dominion, the Monarchs. That would have been an easy winner. By the way, I never did confess to eating all my daughter's snacks, by the way, as you overheard this morning. Got away wow. with it, I think. Wow. I think I, 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 I'm going to take it to the everything. grave. <laughs> going to take it to the grave. <laughs> were, were, they, were they Entenmann's mini muffins? Is that what they were? I think they were like these cinnamon roll things. I don't know. They were good, man. At 11 o'clock, they were real. 11 o'clock at night, they were real good. You know what else is good? Uh, talking LSU, Texas A&M, that's what you're going to do here on the show. Bit, yeah. The only two teams in the SEC without a conference loss. Yeah, uh, All the big I mean, boys have lost. So who's going to still be undefeated, Mark, after Saturday? You are going to let us know the answer. Yeah, it's going to be LSU. Uh, look, I, I normally wouldn't bet against um, A&M at Kyle Field. Um, and full disclosure, like we missed the best of the number here, right? This was at three. It was at two and a half. We're down now to one. Um, so a lot of money. And, and I think it's respect that I think pros and Joes are on the same side here uh, on LSU. Now, I was somebody who told people at the beginning of the year that LSU had a sneaky good run to go win the SEC. And it's starting to come to fruition here. A&M's 4-0 in the SEC. LSU's 3-0. They both won six straight after losing their opener. And it begins to get a lot more head scratching as to how both of these teams lost their opener because LSU lost to USC for crying out loud. He's just been terrible. Who just lost to Maryland and Texas A&M lost to Notre Dame who ended up losing to Northern Illinois at home. So um, both of these teams is an argument that they, they could be seven and zero at this point in time, but look, they're both in the driver's seat to um, make the college football playoff and be in the SEC title game. But the winner of this one, certainly has a much easier path. For me, it's as simple as the LSU offense is markedly better than the A&M offense. Connor Wegman is, is scary, inconsistent. Like, and that's really what this boils down to. Like, it's week eight here, BP, and this guy only has three more touchdown passes than you and I do. And he's got four interceptions on the year. And, so any, I feel they were all in that Missouri game, too. Sorry not to cut you off. Yeah, no, I mean, it was, it, you know, I mean, um, and it's not like he's a big time running quarterback that takes off and does it with his legs. Wegman feels like he's a little bit of a liability here at this point in time. Uh, and I just don't know that I trust it. And I trust him when it comes to you saw the game he had against Mississippi State, one touchdown, two picks, you know, I mean, against Notre Dame, equal talent. He threw two interceptions. The Missouri game, it was zero and zero. But, you know, there was just not much there. So I look at this and I go against an LSU defense that at least is somewhat respected at this point in time. They're much better than they were last year. Wegman's going to come up a little bit, a little bit short. Garrett Nussmeyer and the group of receivers that LSU has, that's enough for me to back these guys here, even at a shorter number. I don't really think the number matters. I think LSU wins by margin or Texas A&M wins a game by a field goal. That's kind of the way I look at this whole thing, and that would have covered the, the short number anyway. So give me LSU here to win this game uh, and end up going undefeated in the SEC in the driver's seat for the title game. My gosh, LSU. Smash that like button if you agree with Mark Zinno there. 
Let us know who you think is going to win the SEC, end up winning the SEC this year. It's a fun discussion to be had for perhaps a different day. Uh, I am taking a look at the independent circuit, Notre Dame playing Navy. Navy's in the AAC now, so they're not uh, a true independent anymore. But uh, this is probably the biggest. Go ahead. Go Army, beat Navy. That's all. I just got to get it in when I can. Okay, there you go. Uh, well, how about go Notre Dame, beat Navy? Uh, that's what we're going to talk about here today. Uh, this is probably the biggest Notre Dame-Navy game in, in quite some time. I mean, who knows the last time it, it meant the two ranked teams. You mentioned Notre Dame, the Northern Illinois loss. I think if Notre Dame wins out, Zinno, they still can make the college football playoff. And this would be a top 25 win now if they could pull it off. History is uh, not smiling on the guys with the boats, Zinno, uh, because check this out. Navy, a double-digit undefeated underdog, okay? You exclude the COVID season of 2020, which we always do. Double-digit underdogs, undefeated in game seven or later. Two and 20 straight up, eight and 14 against the number. Ironically, Notre Dame had one of those wins back in 2012. So, There's no doubt about it in my mind. Notre Dame is winning on Saturday. This game's at East Rutherford, New Jersey, by the way, the home of the NFL's Giants and Jets, MetLife. Uh, I think Navy's – yeah, they're not good teams, are they? Uh, Especially when they play at nighttime. Uh, This is a noon Eastern kickoff, for the record. But, uh, look, here's the deal. I know Navy's scoring scoring offense is incredible. 44.8 points per game. It's top four in the country. Guess what? Notre Dame's got a top five scoring defense. It's by far the top, the best defense that Navy will have faced this season. Couple other things here, okay? Look at who Navy's played this year, all right? I mean, hats off to them, okay? We love that the service academies are doing well, but Navy has beaten Bucknell, Temple, Memphis, UAB, Air Force, and Charlotte. Before last week, Memphis was the only team in that group that had more than one FBS win. And let's look at the box score last week for Navy and Charlotte. Navy was outgained by Charlotte. They only The middies only gained 288 total yards. They had four touchdown drives of 40 yards or less and, and two pick sixes. So uh, very misleading 51-17 final for Navy last week. They're going down. Another undefeated falls. I would play Navy, a Notre Dame 14 or less easy. You can get 13 and a half at DraftKings. That is my half of the double play. Smash that like button if you agree. And comment down below with your favorite bets for Saturday. Mark Zeno, what do you got going on this weekend at wagertalk.com? I mean, folks, uh, we're swinging big this week. We're on the 10 and 1 college football Ooh. run. Four pack. 5% best bet. Two four percent plays and a team total for you guys. I mean, we're coming out swing, swinging big, and uh, I feel really good about where we are right now. And uh, <laughs> I, uh, I really, really think that we're in a good spot. So as I'm being thrown off here by uh, several different things going on at the same time. WT.buzz/mz. Get the five percent play. You get two of the four percent plays. A four pack all there. Uh, I do have a World Series game up that's been sitting up there for a couple of days now. If you're interested in that, you can go grab that at the site as well. WT.buzz slash MZ. But that 5% play up there right now on the site. Go get it. The man mentioned the World Series. We'll be breaking down game one here in just a moment. But first, let me tell you what I got going on this weekend. Only my second 5% NFL play of the season is locked and loaded. The first, Mark in case if you forgot, was the Broncos absolutely destroying the Raiders three weeks ago. My only 5% college play of the season thus far, last month, was Texas Tech over Arizona State. So, yeah, you absolutely got to get on board Sunday with this 5% max bet. Just the third in football this season and the second in NFL. I also have four plays locked and loaded in college football across Friday and Saturday. It is a 12-2 and run in CFB, white hot. Number one this season, 68.8%. So we are feeling good. We are looking good. Ready for a big weekend, WT.buzz slash BP. Now, uh, I've given you no effusive praise today, really, Zeno, uh, which I should do because today is my my last day that I contractually have to do that because your Yankees beat my Guardians in the ALCS. You're smart. I'm dumb. You're good looking. I'm not attractive. Yada, yada, yada. All the above. And so... Look, man, we got one hell of a World Series with the Yankees and Dodgers. Uh, And I know you're looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Let's give the people a play for game one. I'll be honest with you. uh, Look, no hard feelings from the ALCS, Mark. I think the Yankees are going to win this series. 
Okay, I'm, I'm betting the Yankees to win this series. So. But but let's drill down and give the folks a people a play for game one. All right, um, we're going to look into the prop market here. Um, and again, I do have a play up at the site for the game. Uh, so check that out. But uh, I'm looking into the prop market here. Mookie bets over one and a half total bases. Now, I just want to give you guys some context here and back up and go with the ALS, ALSDS with the Yankees and Royals. Garrett Cole, okay, the one guy that he faced in that Royals series that couldn't get out was Tommy Pham. Tommy Pham had an over career 400 batting average against Garrett Cole coming into that series. And there were multiple times he came up and gave multiple hits uh, throughout that series. So when I look at this series, I look at Garrett Cole, Mookie Betts is batting over 400 against him lifetime. He's 7 for 17. He's only got one strikeout against him. He's got an OPS of 915. So the guy is clearly getting on base and making contact. Let's look at Mookie Betts to go over one and a half at bat, over one and a half total bases, rather. He's leading off, so you know he's going to get the most at bats against Cole. If Cole gets into the sixth, there's a good chance that Betts is facing him three times to get over one and a half bases. That's where we look tonight. Mookie Betts over one and a half bases in game one. There you go. Smash that like button if you agree with that. Let us know how you're betting World Series game one. Let us know how you're betting the World Series in general. Who do you got? Yankees or Dodgers? Obviously, it's going to be a lot of eyes game two uh, Saturday. I've got nothing on the game tonight personally, but I love Mark's look there. Um, anything else for the people, Mark? I mean, I think we promoted uh, and we have given them three free plays. Hopefully, we do better than we did yesterday. Yeah, we, we need to do better. Again, uh, and I cashed my last 5% play on Iowa a couple of weeks ago. I forgot to mention that. Yes, so. you did. Um, we have uh, we are rolling here, and I know that people want this, so we are going to do this again next month. Last month we get did a package where you get BP and I plays together. Uh, we're going to do that again next month. We'll probably do it once a month here going forward uh, with the morning wagers. So, um, but you know, go grab the plays at the site right now, and uh, we we will turn this thing around. You know, we, we we hit a little bit of a snag here. We will turn this thing around for you guys here with all the plays on the show. It was just one day yesterday. It was one day. We'll dust ourselves off, try again. We were 3-0 and two days ago, so there we go. Still a 49-32 run overall here on the morning wager. I'd be remiss if I did not mention that. I know that's the one record that you like uh, that I bring up, Mark. So, yeah, all right, because I'm he's Mark's. Yeah, okay. Uh, he's Mark Zitto. I'm Brian Power, guys. Until next time, let's catch some tickets. Have a great weekend.